I sure hope this Mother's Day is a special day for all of you moms. For all that you do, you deserve to be treated like queens today. And not just today, but every day. Know that the church keeps you in prayer today. We're thanking Almighty God for the wonderful things that you do in your family and beyond. We're asking the Lord to support you and and give you all the graces that you need in order to persevere in your vocation to motherhood. So happy Mother's Day to all the moms. Mother's Day is difficult for us this year, ironically, because of an issue that is near and dear to the hearts of all mothers, namely the safety and protection of human life in the womb, innocent life, precious life. Every mother knows and feels this. Mothers have great instincts about nurturing babies. Ask any mother who has lost a child early on in pregnancy. Every innocent human life is precious, even the tiniest human life in the womb is dear. What a tragedy that some mothers have been denied the choice to bring their babies to term. What a tragedy that some mothers have been coerced into abortion by the circumstances of poverty or paternal abandonment. What a tragedy that some mothers did not know that there was help available at places like our own local pregnancy care center. What a tragedy that some mothers have been deceived by the shameful tactics of Planned Parenthood an enterprise that preys upon mothers when they are most vulnerable. What a tragedy that some mothers have been brainwashed into thinking that abortion is a good thing, a fundamental right to which all are entitled. How utterly diabolical is this train of thought. This Mother's Day, our nation is again rocked by scandal. The scandal of the theft and release of internal documents of our nation's Supreme Court. An incident unprecedented in the history of our nation. An incident that puts in grave danger the lives of Supreme Court justices and their family members. The Supreme Court is an amazing institution. It is an ingenious part of the separation of powers designed by the framers of our Constitution, a branch of government that keeps in check the powers of both the executive branch and the legislative branch. In other words, the Supreme Court functions to keep the president from being a dictator and to prevent Congress from degenerating into mob rule. Every ruling of the Supreme Court, whether you agree or disagree with it, is published not simply as a yea or nay, but a carefully reasoned decision supported by concurring opinions and challenged by dissenting opinions. When a ruling is published, every citizen can read the opinions of the majority of justices who have made the decision <coughs> and the minority of <coughs> justices who see things differently. These decisions require great propriety, 
and strict confidentiality among the justices, their clerks, and the staff, with protocols that have been strictly kept down through the years. The mechanisms of the Supreme Court are to be admired and respected even if one does not agree with the outcome of a particular case. Violence was done to the Supreme Court last week, all in the name of undermining a decision drafted by Justice Alito and circulated among the other eight justices. In the document, Justice Alito affirms the Mississippi law that prohibits abortions after a heartbeat is present, approximately 15 weeks into the pregnancy. In affirming the law, Justice Alito dismantles Roe versus Wade with surgical precision. If his draft becomes the decision of the Supreme Court, authority to regulate or prohibit abortions returns to the states. Abortion becomes a local issue. And this is exactly what we have been praying for since the Roe v. Wade decision in 1973. And this is what pro-abortion advocates have long feared and their reaction this week has been vitriolic. One group published online the addresses of Supreme Court justices so that protesters could gather around their homes, something that is prohibited by federal law. Another group has called for demonstrations at or near our Catholic churches and even for the disruption of the holy sacrifice of the Mass. Over the past few days, Father Meyer and I have been working closely with local law enforcement, and we appreciate their help very, very much. We've taken every step to ensure a safe environment in all seven Catholic churches in our county. We urge each one of you to be vigilant and never hesitate to call 911 if you observe any suspicious behavior. And this is not just for this. This holds true forever. Many, many law enforcement officers have told me that they would rather respond to nine calls about suspicious behavior that end up being nothing at all than to respond to the one call that wasn't made about something that was truly serious. So please be vigilant and never hesitate to call 911 if you see suspicious behavior in any setting. Let us be very clear this Mother's Day. Our church is pro-life. Our church is unambiguously pro-life. Abortion is a moral evil and a crime against human life. And this teaching is binding. Also, our church is firmly committed to working with organizations that offer women and men real choices for dealing with unexpected pregnancies. The Pregnancy Care Center in Lawrenceburg is a perfect example, and I know many of you support the Pregnancy Care Center with your donations, with your precious gift of time, our Knights of Columbus just this week had a beautiful golf outing. The proceeds all went to the Pregnancy Care Center or to funding the purchase of ultrasound machines 
that really, really make a difference when a mother in trouble can see not only a baby, but her baby. And that makes all the difference in the world in making the right choice. Our church advocates for laws that protect the unborn and their mothers from the tragedy of abortion. Our church teaches that abortion is a mortal sin, but not a sin so grave that the Lord cannot or will not forgive. Those who have been deceived by the culture of death and who have procured an abortion or assisted someone who has done so are not outside the bounds of the Lord's forgiveness. Come to confession. Be reconciled. Be healed by God's grace. Move forward in life sustained by God's mercy. The Lord will never refuse anyone who comes to him with sorrow for their sins. Our church teaches that Catholics who hold public office and who persist in supporting permissive abortion laws and who are obstinate in supporting such laws, even having been warned by their local bishop, are not to present themselves for Holy Communion nor are they to be given Holy Communion should they present themselves. For the life of me, I cannot figure out why this is not enforced strictly and consistently. On this Mother's Day, we remember with great affection our Blessed Mother, who herself was a teenager with an unexpected pregnancy. We recall that she showed great bravery and courage in that situation, trusting that the promises of the Lord would be fulfilled. We remember that she experienced firsthand the cruelty of King Herod, the diabolical dictator who ordered the massacre of the Holy Innocents. And we will never forget how she stood faithfully at the foot of the cross, experiencing the greatest injustice and the greatest sorrow that any mother has ever known. In a few minutes, we will crown the image of the Blessed Virgin Mary out of great devotion and respect. Many people these days are asking what they can do about all the problems around. Problems in our nation, problems in our world, problems in our church. And I'm pretty quick to respond that the very best that any one of us can do is to put those cares and concerns into the hands of the Blessed Mother and to ask her to pray with us and for us, to intercede for us and bring those needs, the needs of our nation, our world, and our church before the throne of grace. We can no, do no better than to trust our mother. For never was it known that anyone who fled to her protection, implored her help, or sought her intercession was left unaided. We are truly inspired with this confidence. <clears throat>